Now let's actually prove the part of the correspondence between convexity of functions and convexity of sets via the epigraph. So let's formulate a theorem. Let f uh, be a function. Then the following statements are equivalent. So first statement f is a convex function. Second statement the epigraph of f is a convex set. And the third statement is the strict epigraph, epi s of f, is a convex set. And let's prove this. So we have to prove essentially three things. Um, the first uh, part is uh, going from statement 1 to statement 2. This is let f be convex. Then we have to prove the, uh, that epi f is a convex set. So let xr and ys be in epi f. Hope you can see this on the in, on, in the video. So um, yeah, and. Uh, let lambda be between, be between 0 and 1. Okay, what we have to prove is that the conv convex combination between those two um, is always is, is also an element of FEF. So what we have is uh, that f of x less or equal than r. We have f of y less, of e less or equal than s by these relations, by the definition of the epigraph. So by convexity of f, We have f of 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y less or equal than 1 minus lambda f of x plus lambda f of y. And by these relations, we have that this is less or equal than 1 minus lambda r plus lambda s. Okay, so. Um, now, going back to the definition of the epigraph, we have that the element, we have this one and this one, those form a, uh, form a pair in the epigraph. So we have 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y, comma, 1 minus lambda r plus lambda s. Um, this is a pair in the epigraph as I said, and we can see that goes a little further. This one is actually by the operations we have defined uh, on this set H times R, uh, R yeah, uh, H, our usual space, times the, real, uh, the set of real numbers. So this is 1 minus lambda x r plus lambda y s. So this is according to our definitions and this is in the epigraph of f and therefore we have shown that the epigraph is convex. So this shows direction, the direction from 1 to 2. Okay, next step is the direction from 2 to 3. So now we assume that the epigraph of f is a convex set and we want to show that the strict epigraph of f is also a convex set. Okay, um, let's see how we do that. So let epi f be convex. Okay, and 
let xr and ys be in the strict epigraph of f and let lambda be between 0 and 1. Okay, so we have to prove that this convex combination is also in the strict epigraph of S. So we have f of x less than r and we have f of y less than s. Um, and these are strict inequalities. So um, let me check this. So um, what I said in the last video that this um, this theorem, if you use the epigraphs, you might convex, uh, you might avoid edge cases. Um, this holds true if we cover all these edge cases in in the proof of of this theorem. Um, why don't we have edge cases here? Because we we know that f of x is less or equal than r, f of y is less or equal than s, and we don't really have anything. Uh, so what we, what we do is basically use convexity and then um, things don't can't really go wrong in this direction. In this direction, however, um, it might happen that things go wrong whenever we have um, uh, infinite function values. So here we see that the function value here can be minus infinity and the function value here can be plus infinity. Uh, cannot be plus infinity, sorry, because plus infinity is not less than any real number. Okay? Um, the plus infinity part comes in the direction from 3 to 1. What can go wrong here is that you have minus infinity and you try to calculate with minus infinity and get less than and then actually you have minus infinity and minus infinity you end up with this and then you get less or e then this is actually equal. And to avoid this, uh, since these things can be minus infinity, uh, let alpha and beta uh, be real numbers such that f of x less than alpha less than r. So whenever you have this less than relation, when also when, when f of x is minus infinity, you can always find a real number which is between f of x and r. And same here, same for y. Okay, and now this makes things easier because we can deal with, we can just calculate with real numbers alpha and beta as we are used to. And we don't have these shenanigans with minus infinity here, which have some st slightly strange r arithmetic rules. Um, so we need to, to basically show again that we are in the strict epigraph here. So let's calculate f of x, uh, f of 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y. This is what we will need uh, from, um, this is actually not what we need. Um, this will not really, so, so th this will help us eventually. Um, but <laughs> actually not here. So this is not the, the step we want. So let me delete this. Uh, so what we want here is uh, we have f of x less than alpha, f of y less than beta. So we know that um, x alpha and y beta are in the epigraph of f. Okay, so we know by convexity that by the convexity of the of this epigraph here, we know that Um, 
1 minus lambda x plus lambda y and then 1 minus lambda alpha lambda plus lambda beta is in the epigraph of f. Okay, then I have to continue here. So this is by the convexity of the epigraph. So we know that um, since this is in the epigraph, f of 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y less or equal than um, 1 minus lambda f of x plus, uh, sorry, uh, of course not f of x here, um, 1 minus lambda alpha plus lambda beta. So now we are we're ready. Um, this is because of the epigraph. Uh, since this is in the epigraph, we have uh, here we have the first component of this pair, here we have the second component of this pair. Okay, and now we have this, um, we have this here. So notice that uh, we don't have that both of the, uh, both lambda and alpha, uh, 1 minus lambda are zero. So one of them is positive and then we have alpha less, or, uh, less than r, beta less than s. Um, so one of them is positive and we have strict inequalities in both cases. So um, we have strict inequality here. So we have 1 minus lambda, um, alpha is less than r, and beta is less than s. Okay, um, so I think we are done. So um, what does this mean? We have now something, some relation for S, uh, for F. Uh, we can put this together. Um, 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y. And then the right hand side, 1 minus lambda r plus lambda s. This is an element of the strict epigraph of s, of f. Okay, what does this mean? Since we are in the strict, um, what does this mean? We have 1 minus lambda xr plus lambda ys. This is this, uh, uh, just um, using the operations on h times r. This is in the strict epigraph of f. And we came from um, xr and ys in the strict epigraph of s, and we, show now, we showed now that the uh, convex combination is also an epi s of f, using the convexity of epi f. Okay, so we have shown the convexity of epi s of f using the convexity of epi f. And therefore this shows the direction from 2 to 3. And we could not directly use these values r and s here because we only know that the convex combination would be, since we use the convexity of the epigraph, we would only know that the convex combination is in the epigraph and not in the strict epigraph. Therefore, we had to put these alpha and beta in between. Okay, now the direction from 3 to 1. So, um, what do we have to, what do we have here? We have let epi s f be convex. And then let x and y be in H. And we have to show the convexity of F. So, and let lambda between 0 and 1. Okay, 
Now we have to deal with the cases that f of x and f of y are plus infinity. So if f of x or f of y equals plus infinity, then 1 minus lambda f of x plus lambda f of y is plus infinity. Uh, since we have defined, if, if lambda is zero, for example, then we have defined zero times plus infinity is plus infinity. So this is plus infinity, and this is obviously greater or equal than anything. In particular, it's greater or equal than f of one minus lambda um, x plus lambda y. Okay, now we have that. So we, now we have the case that f of x or f of y is plus infinity. So therefore, now let f of x be less than plus infinity and f of y be less than plus infinity to just in exclude this edge case. Okay. Um, then we can, we can still have to deal with the case minus infinity. Um, in this case, in this minus infinity case, we still find this, we can still apply this trick here by uh, using that we can put something in between. Um, uh, if we need to. Let's, let's see. So we have x and y in H and Therefore, um, um, we, 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 can, we can only use the, the convexity of the strict epigraph of f. So we have to find points in the strict epigraph of s going from like f of x and f of y. So um, therefore, um, we cannot, we, we don't know f of x, if f of x is minus infinity, um, then we cannot be in the, then, then the pair x, f of x is not in the strict epigraph of f. So we can't, uh, we can't write this directly. So now let r be greater than f of x, just arbitrary, uh, just some arbitrary r, r and s greater than f of y be arbitrary. Um, yep, and arbitrary uh, real numbers. I should say we don't want plus infinity. Okay. So now we can, now we have the elements in the strict epigraph. Now we have x, r, and y, s in the strict epigraph. Okay. And therefore by convexity we have 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y, 1 minus lambda r plus lambda s in epi s f, so in the strict epigraph. Um, okay, by convexity. So now we have f at the point 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y less than 1 minus lambda r plus lambda s. Okay, and now we have we have chosen these these this these r and s arbitrary. What does this mean? We can now form the limit. Um, now uh, the limit is is an operation in in the in the space of extended real numbers, and therefore we can uh, form the limit of r going down to we are above, so going down to f of x, 
and s going down to f of y, then f of 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y. Um, by forming the limit, of course, um, we, 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 can, we, we have to change this strict inequality to less or equal than, um, because in the limit, um, equality can happen. But uh, whenever you are, you are above this, you cannot go below in the limit, uh, because this is the plus and, and taking, taking multiples is a continuous operation. And therefore, we have 1 minus lambda f of x, the limit point, plus lambda f of y. And this concludes our proof. So we have shown the third direction. We have used the, um, here we have used that the epigraph, the strict epigraph is convex. And we have shown that f is convex as a result. So now we have proven from that 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, and 3 implies 1. So we have, in fact, proven that uh, these statements are equivalent, meaning that whenever one statement holds, all of them hold.